Ladies and gentlemen, I believe the dark days are nearly over. Since the inception of the first video game back in 1958, we as a society have struggled to properly adapt a video game into a new medium. Sure, books and comics were the easy part, but live action or animated series have been a scarlet letter on the industry for decades. I mean, with a masterpiece like this. But with the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game, we're not like the others who get all the fame. If your sink is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. I don't know why video games aren't taken seriously. Jesus, I'm so glad I was not alive when this was airing. Anyway, now, finally, after 60 plus years, the curse is nearly over because Cyberpunk Edge Runners is phenomenal. Edge Runners is the latest show in the current trend of highly successful animated video game adaptations following the likes of Arcane and Castlevania. While those other shows are great, with Arcane specifically being the gold standard of adaptations, go check out my Halo vs. Arcane video for more on that, Edge Runners did something those other adaptations couldn't. Edge Runners has virtually revived Cyberpunk 2077. To my knowledge, no video game adaptation has done that before. Sure, Witcher 3 had a big uptick in players after the Witcher series came out, but Witcher 3 was already a highly acclaimed game. Cyberpunk 2077? Not so much. So today, I want to take a look at Cyberpunk Edge Runners and discuss how this anime managed to bring back nearly 110,000 players to a game famously panned by the video game community. Also, I will mention some very minor spoilers throughout, nothing too substantial, but if you wish to go in completely blind, I recommend you check out now and come back later. Right off the bat, if you have watched the show, you know the best thing about the whole thing is the characters. The dynamics between them, the motivations, and just their individual personalities are all fantastic. They complement the world they inhabit extremely well and don't seem out of place in the slightest. Yeah, I could totally see a lolly with a shotgun in this world. Yeah, makes total sense that people go insane when they have too many implants. And yeah, of course Giancarlo Esposito is a villain. The major thing that a lot of adaptations fail at is forcing the world to conform to the new characters they create, while it should be the other way around. Because in doing so, changing the world to fit a character inherently changes everything the game represents, and the final product is less of the game and more of a cheap knockoff. This will be the only Halo mention, but take the Halo show for example. The story feels as if the writer had his own show that no one wanted to make, so he slapped Halo in the title and changed the characters to Halo characters, and boom, now you have a Halo show. The whole thing feels wrong, it doesn't feel like Halo. If anything, the whole show feels like they forced a generic sci-fi show to be Halo, and the final product was just this Frankenstein's monster of a show. Just from the first episode of Edge Runners alone, we care about the character of David because his struggles are very relatable to a lot of people and those struggles he faces were presented pretty well throughout the base game. Cyberpunk 2077 told us the players that the corporations suck, poverty is at an all-time high, and everything in Night City just f***ing blows. We the player experienced Night City through the eyes of the main character, V, which had to conform to the rules established by the gameplay. Looking around and talking to people, we get clues that yeah, everything sucks and people are crazy. But we never experienced the negative financial aspect of the world because that wouldn't be a very fun game to play. That's where David comes in. He introduces us to that aspect of the world. He lives with his mom, who is working extremely hard to get David through school so that he could have a better life one day. All she wants is what's best for David. All David wants is to keep his mom happy. That plot element, while being used quite often in other media, is extremely effective in the cyberpunk world. It's the underdog story about sticking it to the rich. I mean, who doesn't love that? It's a tale as old as time. But that motivation of wanting to move up in the world is a simple trick that gets us, the audience, to automatically feel for David and his mother. And that is a through line through everyone David meets. Main's crew, Lucy, everyone just wants to be in a better place. They want to rise up through poverty and become something more, whether it be going to the moon or just gaining respect. Shifting focus here to just the overall world, Edge Runners does an amazing job at establishing the world for those who haven't played the games. Again, the first episode sets up the world very, very well without over-explaining things. Context clues are established simply by looking at the world, not by being told outright. David leaves his apartment and doesn't take notice of the people slumming it right outside. This lets us know that this is normal, so the audience goes, okay, there's a lot of homeless people in Night City. David keeps walking and can't use the stairs because there's so much trash, so he has to jump and land in more trash to even leave the building. Now we know that the city is very run down. On the streets, David walks past a car crash, some dudes who are... Uh, 
B busy, someone throwing up, a building on fire, and the bloody remains of a crime scene, all on his way to school. So now our previous assumptions about Night City are reinforced, and then some. We know that Night City is a very, very rough city. The world that this little two minute section paints for us is one that is horrible and unforgiving. Not to mention the fact that David doesn't seem to mind any of it. And that alone tells us, the audience, that for something to truly shock him, it has to be extraordinarily f***ed up. I mean, shit, you already know it's a dystopian hellscape when you have to pay to use an in-unit washer and dryer. But what's really cool about the way they portray Night City is the fact that people who have played the games recognize locations. Throughout the entire show, I was straight up the DiCaprio meme. It's almost as if they took screenshots of the game and drew over it to fit the style of the anime. Which is awesome and such a great idea. So fans of the game see familiar locations and are all like, oh shit, I know that place. And on the flip side, people who watch the anime first, then play the games, see familiar locations and are all like, oh shit, I know that place. The world alone literally caters to both viewers, those familiar with the franchise and those who are new. They don't go for a broader audience appeal and change fundamental factors of the world because doing so will alienate their core audience. They're not trying to hide what it is. This is cyberpunk, everything sucks. Go get chromed up, chum, and zero some maelstrom f That's the world. The cyberpunk world will work for some people and it may not work for others. Okay, cool, so is life. You can't cater to everyone because in doing so, you cater to no one. But despite all of that, despite everything I mentioned prior, I believe the main reason Edge Runners brought back the player base to Cyberpunk 2077 is the simple fact that the series was made with passion. Studio Trigger, who made the anime, unapologetically loved the world. You can tell the show is made with passion. It's not just another corporate boardroom design slog fest with a popular IP slapped in the title. That's probably the best thing about this show because if it was the latter, then that would be the most ironic thing to happen. I'm a firm believer in the notion that passion breeds excellence. Wanna make a show about a turtle who drives a train around and just fucking loves life? Inject 30 cc's of passion into that bitch and I'm sure it would be a great show. I believe that anything with the right team and the right amount of passion behind it has the capability to make a fantastic final product. Passion put into literally anything is always noticeable and always appreciated. And the passion put into Edge Runners is what revitalized Cyberpunk 2077. From a personal aspect, as soon as I finished the series, I immediately started my third playthrough. Hell, I have a friend who started a new game just after hearing the ringtone in episode one. That's the beauty of the series. It's so cyberpunk, it's great, it's unique, it's wonderful, and above all else, it's finally giving Cyberpunk 2077 the fair chance at redemption it deserves.